Now we've gone from a one-star program to a four-star program in just four years, but we are three-star academically. The suspensions of Justin Chambers and Lawrence Martin could have cost us, and I'm still wondering what if we had them for those two games that we lost. So now we got to kick the school budget up, especially on the discipline end. We're going to kick it up to 34%. Despite all this assists, the NCAA are still looking at us with their noses up. So let's meet the new Hornets. Edward Atkins from Wetumpka, Alabama. Then we got Kendrick Billings from Cahaba Heights, Alabama. I think that's up there in the Birmingham area. We got the number one kicker in the country, Brandon Ziegler from Morton, Mississippi, coming to the Gump Town. From Okoye, Florida, you got Trey Tyler, a quarterback at that. Four-star quarterback, 13th ranked one in the country. We got the number two wide receiver coming in from Mansfield, Texas, Ryan Thompson, our first Texas recruit. Remember, Gene Singleton, he's from Texas too, but he's a transfer. All the way from California, pole way at that. Leon Hill, the middle linebacker, 5'11", 237. Jonathan Wright from Anderson, Alabama, 6'3", 351, three-star. Deidre Carroll, a guard from Forestdale, Alabama. That's also up there in the Birmingham area. Rashad Cavender, our first Illinois recruit. Galesburg, Illinois, to be more precise. Now, we got a lot of offensive linemen in this class, too. Josh Reese, there goes another guard. Orange Grove, Mississippi. And then 6'8", 300 pounds from Alexander City. Terrell Owens' hometown. Kellen McDonald. Oh, man. I know a lot of these cats are going to be red shirting. Shane Harris from Rainsville, Alabama. Ranked number 55 in his position. And then Donnie Munker, not far behind him at number 58. Ryan McCauley, the guard from Talladega, Alabama, coming into the Gump Town. 6'6", 328. Chad Jenkins from Trustville, Alabama. We're looking for him to replace either Jason Moore or Cedric McNeil. Sid McQueen. The number six punter from Greesville, Mississippi. Same place as William Dorsey. I wonder if they're teammates. I don't know. But anyway, we got Avery Benson, also from Trustville, Alabama. So we looking for Jenkins and Benson to replace Moore and McNeil. Then Charlie Gutierrez from Talladega, Alabama. 224 at his position. I don't think I recruited this cat. I don't even remember recruiting him. He might not make the cut. So that's our class. So let's look at the top 25 classes. Texas A&M comes in at number one. And as you look down the rest of this list, if you're wondering why this is not a live comm, so I forgot to turn down the volume on the music while I was doing the live comm, and you can barely hear anything that I'm saying, that the music is so loud. So we're just gonna do it like this. Now again, we're looking to go into season five with the mentality of BCS or bus. Anything else is a failure. And the main reason why we lost two games, well not the main reason, one of the reasons why we lost two games is because we didn't have our two impact players we was missing Lawrence Martin more than we was missing Justin Chambers, to be honest with you. I really do think, especially against Southern. I really feel that if we had defeated Southern, we'd be in a BCS bowl game. No question about that. So as you look down the list, you see the Florida Gators coming at 16. The Auburn Tigers, they coming at 18. I mean 17. Penn State is 18. Virginia Tech is 19. They got two five stars. 20 is Wisconsin. And then at 21, there we are. Those Alabama State Hornets break a top 25 class for the first time in school history. This is probably the best class in the era of Joseph Cooley and in this era of Alabama State football. We're looking for bigger and better things as we get ready for season five. Now you might see some uh, significant changes going into this season as well but let's look at the rest of the HBCUs and how they did there goes the MEAC champion Tennessee State Tigers coming in at number 46 two uh, four stars 
three three stars. They had a full back from Thomason, Georgia. And that looks like a guard from Glen Ellen, Illinois. But yeah, this team has been balling too. I can't wait to see what they do in season five as well. Because they got some firepower on offense. There goes the Grambling State Tigers at number 59. Improving a little bit. Three, four stars. That's not bad. I'm pretty sure they got some transfers in there somewhere though. So now we look at the Swag East champions. That's right, Texas Southern. They come in at 67 and they didn't do too well, man. They got a three-star tackle for Margate, Florida. But everybody else is a two-star and then there's one one-star. So Prairie View a and at 68. They've gone on a downhill since they made that sweat title game that we beat them in. 71, the Florida a and Rattlers. They did get two three-stars, but they got some transfers coming in that are nice. And they're probably going to be a challenge this time around because we blew them out in season four. At 74, there goes Jackson State. They managed to pick up two four-stars, a middle linebacker and a center. So let's see how that works out for them. I wonder if Alex Mitchell is coming back. Meanwhile, there goes Alcorn State. They're no longer on probation. They got a four-star tight end coming in from Tennessee. So let's see how they do now. Then you have Howard coming in at 88. Uh, that's an improvement considering how it has been absolute trash in this series then you got delaware state they have three three stars and then there goes the south carolina state bulldogs now as you know in real life they're the celebrations bowl hbcu champions but here they got a four-star tackle and aaron jackson from taylor's north carolina but that's pretty much it the bulldogs only have one me at title since the start of this series Mississippi Valley State comes in at 98. Then you have North Carolina A&T. None of these programs are doing too hot. And the majority of their recruits are uh, two stars. You see Southern. Now, despite the way this class looks, Southern actually got some nice players coming back for next season. So be on the lookout for them. Norfolk State comes in at 103. They were one win away from going to a bowl game. Hopefully things will turn around for them in season five, but good job on getting three three stars So there goes Arkansas Pine Bluff Only two stars and one stars for their class They did miss some big-time players too. They're gonna miss Jeremy Weddle and they're gonna miss Mark Baker Both of them were big-time players in their program, but now It's time for them to rebuild it looks like and boy do they have a lot of work to do Morgan State comes in at 112. They didn't do too hot either. And then there goes the Alabama AM Bulldogs. Despite going 9 and 3, they still aren't able to attract a lot of attention as far as quality players, but they did get one three-star. They also got a nice squad coming back next year, too. At 117, there goes the Hampton Pirates. Now you know in real life they just left the Big South and now they're going to the CAA. And then the lowest ranked class as far as HBCU schools belong to the Bethune Cookman Wildcats but they got some nice transfers too so join us next time it's time to get ready for season five we're going to bring you the season five preview have you see what our team is going to look like and there might be some big time changes as well stay tuned peace